Hi, hello again on my scientific channel Discover Social Sciences. Uh, I am presenting another educational video which I essentially placed in the series or in the educational path uh, which I call uh, Business Models in Renewable Energies. It is normally like, um, let's say, intermediately advanced stuff for my students in like the economic and managerial line of uh, study. Yet this specific video is uh, connected to another stream of my content, to the stream uh, which I generally label my investment experience, my teaching and my science. The thing is that, well, for some time already I have been actively investing in the stock market. I have a specific strategy of mine which consists in investing a constant amount of money every month in the stock market and to do my best to learn on my mistakes and to learn on my successes. Uh, in that let's say, in that quest for the optimal investment result, I have so far achieved a quite nice score. I mean, since January this year, I have a 47, or I think 48% return on the cash invested, which is quite nice. And I decided to use that experience of mine as material for teaching and for scientific research too. And in my investment strategy, I have a few privileged industries that I invest in. I invest in biotechnology, I invest in renewable energies, and I invest in information technologies. Plus, I open investment positions in industries or in businesses, which I think are going to be growing sort of contingently to the pandemic and to the technological change that, pande that the pandemic brings. So I have that one specific field of renewable energies. I have already two investment positions in that field. It is the, the, the US-based company First Solar and it is a Germany-based company, SMA Solar Technologies. Now, in this video, I am approaching business models in the industry of renewable energies from a very, let's say, external point of view. What I am interested in is uh, whether the fundamental characteristics of those uh, businesses, which are mostly, as you will see, photovoltaic businesses. Do the fundamental traits of those businesses give me a reasonable expectation that I will have a nice gain with them? So it is a very external, sort of hands-off point of view at what a business model is. It focuses essentially on the most easily observable, the most salient characteristics of a business model. Okay, so let's go. I have that presentation in PowerPoint as usually. So it is business models in renewable energies, part three, solar business and investment opportunities. So I consider broadening my portfolio of investment in the photovoltaic business. I have already those two investment positions, first solar and SMA solar. And my question is the following. Should I invest in something else in the solar business, in the photovoltaic business? And uh, essentially I um, uh, consider three companies, three businesses, Solar Edge, Vivint Solar and Canadian Solar. Now I will jump to the very end of that presentation, just to come back here afterwards, uh, to show you like my basic premises, so my basic interest uh, in those uh, companies. 
So I go to the last slide of my presentation to trends in stock price. Here you can see five graphs, five charts of stock price in selected solar businesses. And I will now focus like one by one on those charts and explain you what I have in mind. So first of all, here you have that chart of the company which gave me so far the best return on my investment. It is First Solar. First Solar, a US-based company, which, by the way, I have already discussed a few times in my past videos devoted to business models in the industry of renewable energies. That blue line is the stock price in the New York Stock Exchange. You can see that right now, since approximately like me, April this year, there is a, an ascending trend. There was a slump and there is an ascending trend. Then I pass to another one here. Now in the center of your screen, you should have the chart, the price chart of another company, which I hold, SMA Solar, based in Germany. If you compare it mentally with the last one I showed you, you see a pattern. You can see a, a pattern, a slump in the beginning of this year, in the sl a slump in the beginning of 2020, and then a gentle recovery and a climb. Now I take the three other companies which I consider to invest in. So here you have Vivint Solar. Uh, Vivint Solar uh, is a US-based company in the photovoltaic business and you can see the same pattern. Dive, recover. Another one, Canadian Solar, in the center of your screen. Once again, uh, spring this year, dive, then recovery. And finally, Canadian Solar, uh, and finally, S S Solar Edge Technologies, which, by the way, is the one I think I will invest in uh, at the end of the day, but we will come to this. So, once again, slump recovery. Hmm? My point is that all those photovoltaic businesses display like roughly the same tendency uh, as, for their stock price, uh, as for their stock price in the stock market. And the intuition behind it, the, intu the intuition which I have, is that in investors behave in, this, in more or less the same manner vis-a-vis -vis all those solar businesses. It means that there is like a central tendency in the capital market, like a pump of money towards those businesses. So that's the basic intuition which uh, made me consider this investment strategy. And by the way, I will, take, I will be taking my final decision, my monthly final decision tomorrow. It is Sunday today, tomorrow, on Monday, I will really decide what to put my money in. Okay, so I go back in that, in that PowerPoint presentation. And now I explain the fundamental traits of the business model, which I'm having a close look at. So I have those, once again, three companies, Solar Edge, Vivin Solar and Canadian Solar. And I want either to make a basket of investment positions out of those three or to decide to invest in just one of them. And I am very fundamental in my approach. So I look essentially for two things. I look first of all for the correlation between changes in market capitalization and changes in assets. I just want to check whether that financial rush towards the stock of those companies in the stock market is somehow correlated with the investment in new assets that those companies make, like inside of their business model. The intuition behind it 
is that if those two are correlated, so if those companies invest in new assets as, um, as the market sort of turns the spotlight on them, it is a good sign because it means that the financial market and the business go sort of in step. If there isn't such correlation, it is an additional factor of risk. It could mean that expectations that investors have could be slightly overshot regarding those, uh, those companies and overshot expectations always and in the same way they end as a sudden slump in the stock price, as a local financial crisis. And the second thing that I'm looking for is current operational efficiency, which I measure with the operational cash flow of that business. I remind you that the operational cash flow is essentially the sum total of the net income that the company makes on a given period, plus amortization and depreciation uh, of its fixed assets and this is essentially it. Eh? There could be other components but these two, so net income after taxes and amortization are the two main ones. As I said, it is a very uh, hands-off approach to business models. So it is, a, it is an approach from the point of view of someone who doesn't want to run operationally those businesses. I just need to know enough about their business models to make an informed investment decision. And this is it. So let's take the data. I made a quick summary of that data. Uh, you have a table here. In the table you have three, three Ds. You can see it here. D market cap, D assets and D operational cash flow. That D plus in round parenthesis the name of the variable is essentially the gradient of change. So, red, so the incremental change in the given variable. I have three variables, market capitalization, assets and operational cash flow. And I study that incremental change, that gradient D, over the, the eight months of, uh, uh, of uh, 2020. I, I should rather say that assets and operational cash flow are studied over the first six months because uh, the end of August essentially falls uh, inside a, a, a fiscal quarter in the financial reporting of companies, but for the sake of presentational simplicity, let's assume that I consider that change within that window from the 1st of January 2020 until the last day of August 2020 as well. And I have those five companies, the two which I hold now. So First Solar, here you can see it, First Solar, and SMA Solar, plus the three others which I consider to invest in right now. The first column is the change in market capitalization. Uh, those two which I hold both changed their market capitalization or increased their market capitalization around like 25% uh, over the, the eight months of the year 2020. And the remaining two are very different or very disparate in that respect. That Vivian Solar guy, they have a, an enormous return uh, or an enormous increase in market capitalization, a moderate increase in the value of assets. So there seems to be something going on in terms of investment sort of in correlation with the interest expressed by financial investors. Yet they have, a, for the moment, a, they have a deteriorating operational cash flow. In the first half of the 2020, they made like a, a deeper loss, a deeper negative uh, operational cash flow. It was like it was worse by nine millions of dollars as compared 
to the first half uh, of 2019. Solar Edge goes very nicely up in terms of market capitalization. It has a nice result as for the operational cash flow. In the first half of this year, they managed to generate $50 million more in operational cash flow as compared to what they managed to squeeze out of their operations in the first half of 2019. And finally, Canadian Solar, which is essentially a Canadian company listed in the American stock market. An interesting increase in market capitalization, uh, a moderate increase in, as uh, in assets and plus $90 million in terms of improvement in the operational cash flow. So my, if I had to now to make a conclusion, uh, those business models as seen from outside, as seen from those very selective metrics, there seem, they seem to be in a phase of slow stabilization. So the industry as a whole seems to be nailing down, to be figuring out the right way of running that photovoltaic business. Still, the truly efficient business scheme, the truly efficient business structure is still to be invented, is still to be defined. There is visibly a lot of trial and error, which is normal because it is a highly innovative industry. As far as I know, there is a whole new generation of solar photovoltaic modules entering the market right now. So there is that necessary adaptation and adaptation costs money. My investment in those companies is based on the reasonable trust that their market will grow. So I essentially assume that the market of photovoltaic energy, photovoltaic electricity will grow. And that's my central assumption. Uh, I learned by trial and error myself uh, that it is very useful in my investment in the stock market to take this approach. Whatever aspect of business models I consider in the companies I invest my money in, that metric, so expected growth of the market, is important. And expected technological change in the market is important too. And question, is it a good move to invest now in an industry which is just in a phase of stabilization, but they are not stabilized, uh, they are not like fully efficient yet? I would say it is risky, but acceptably rational. Once those business models become really efficient, uh, it means that the industry entered the phase of maturity. And in a phase of maturity, you can rarely expect big return on investment. So now it is like a trade-off. That solar industry seems to be like on a nice way up. And this is the reason why I want to invest. But there are risks. And it is a classical example of risk versus profit. If I minimize my risk and I avoid investing in those companies now, I might just uh, uh, let go an opportunity to earn a lot of money on my investment position. So I am willing to accept the risk in order to glean the profits in, uh, in the future. My final pick, so like my favorite for now, is Solar Edge. They seem to have like the best combination. I will return to the table to show you. Uh, the best combination of increase in market capitalization and oper operational efficiency. I will see tomorrow, but for the moment Solar Edge seems to be like my best pick. So now I show you once again that slide with the price charts. So I repeat my reasoning. I started from this observation. I started from observing trends in stock prices in the stock market. Then I went into considering that strategy. Maybe I should invest in three more uh, solar businesses. Then I came to this table very intuitively. So I identified the variables which I am interested in. And then it served me 
to make my decision. So here you can see a business model as something visible from outside. This is important to know that uh, when you run a business, especially when you run a business in the view of attracting new investors, of attracting or of gaining the trust of financial markets, your business model will be observed from outside. People will watch you and people will sort of nail down your business model by certain selected variables that they are the most interested in. And it is useful to know what kind of uh, observational metrics your investors uh, watch you with, what kind of glasses, what kind of lens they look through at you. Okay, this is all in that video devoted to business models in the industry of renewable energies. As usually, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Bye.